Okay, so sodium hydroxide is a strong base that is used all the time. It's in cleaning products, it's used to make pharmaceuticals, it's used in fuel cell production, you name it. The problem, though, is that it is a very strong base and reacts with air. This makes it difficult to keep pure, and therefore it's hard to prepare a solution of sodium hydroxide to a very specific desired concentration. So typically what we do is we make a solution of sodium hydroxide that's close to what we want, and then measure its concentration very accurately against a standard, doing what's known as a titration. A titration is a way to measure the concentration of an unknown sample using the known concentration of a standard. In today's titration, we fill a burette with a solution whose concentration isn't known. Then, we add it slowly to a solution that we'll react with whose concentration is known. After some time, the reaction will finish, which is often obvious due to a color change, and we'll know exactly how much of the unknown solution was added, because the burette is graduated accurately along the side. In this lab, we'll be using potassium acid phthalate, or KHP, as a standard. We can calculate the number of moles of KHP accurately, and since KHP reacts in a one-to-one -one ratio with sodium hydroxide, we can measure how many moles of sodium hydroxide we have by measuring how many moles of KHP react with it. So, we can measure the number of moles of sodium hydroxide we have, and we know the volume of sodium hydroxide we added, so calculating the concentration of the solution in terms of molarity is just dividing moles by liters. So let's get to it. Place a clean plastic weighing dish on the pan of a top-loading balance and tear it. The display will read zero grams. Add between 1.2 and 1.5 grams of dried KHP. To measure the mass of KHP more accurately, you'll use an analytical balance. Zero the analytical balance by pressing the tear button, and it should read zero grams. Place the weighing dish containing your KHP on the pan of your balance and determine the total mass. Now, you can transfer the entire sample to a clean 250 ml Erlenmeyer flask. At this point, reweigh the empty weighing dish, and from the difference in mass, you can determine the mass of KHP, which has actually been transferred to the Erlenmeyer. This accounts for any microscopic amount of KHP that might have adhered to the dish. Prepare two more samples of KHP because you'll need three sets of data today, and be sure to label them so you don't get confused. To each sample, add about 50 ml of deionized water to dissolve the KHP. It's often difficult to completely dissolve the KHP, so try taking off your gloves, rubbing your hands together to make them warm, and then swirl the flask in your warm hands to help the dissolution process. Once the KHP is completely dissolved, add three drops of phenolphthalein indicator solution. It's the phenolphthalein that will change color for us, so that we can see when the reaction has completed. We'll be using a burette to measure accurate volumes today. You can check out Appendix D in your lab manual, or our video version of it, for instructions about the cleaning and use of the burette. Start by rinsing your burette with 10 mils of the sodium hydroxide solution two times, and then fill the burette to about the 0.5 mil mark at the top. Take the initial burette reading. Titrate the KHP acid with your sodium hydroxide solution. The endpoint of the titration will be given by the first permanent pink color maintained in the solution. Slow additions, drop by drop, are essential as you approach the endpoint. You'll probably even find it useful to use half drops. In this technique, you slowly open the stopcock to suspend half a drop from the burette. Then you close the stopcock, gently touch the tip of the burette to the side of the flask, and rinse the sides of the flask to make sure all of the sodium hydroxide gets into the solution. Take the final burette reading and make sure that you record these volumes to two decimal places. Okay, so how do we go from the titration volumes we've recorded to actual concentrations of sodium hydroxide? Well, our accurate measurement of the KHP mass started when we weighed it while it was in the weigh dish. We also have a mass of the weigh dish without the KHP, so the difference between those two numbers will be the exact mass of KHP that ended up in our standard solution. KHP is the formula KC8H5O4, so we can calculate the formula weight and use it to determine how many moles of KHP we had, since we know the mass accurately. Next, we determine how much sodium hydroxide reacted with our standard solution by taking the difference between the initial and final burette volumes we had. 
we know that in that volume of sodium hydroxide, there must have been the same number of moles of KHP and NaOH. We're supposed to find the concentration in molarity units, which is moles per liter. So we just take the number of moles we determined and divide it by the number of liters we used, and we're done. Don't forget to repeat that calculation for each of the three KHP samples you made and report your final answer as an average. <laughs>